So suspended Kenya Power boss Ken Terus and 10 other senior managers in the company spend another night in police cells as the court continues hearing arguments for the release on bail. The 11 are the latest high-profile suspects to spend multiple nights in police cells for graft, including Principal Secretary Lilian Omolo, whose NYS case is still pending in court. But could this bail delay tactic be the new criminal justice system's technique at deterring further spread of endemic wave of graft during the Jubilee second term? Murimi Mwange interrogates this. It was 22 days and cold nights at industrial area and Langata Women's Prison for the over 20 suspects in the estimated 9 billion shillings National Youth Service scandal, including former Principal Secretary Lilian Omolo. Quite a long time and seemingly world apart from their usual leafy suburbs of Muthaiga, Karen, Kitisuru or Runda. At least until the June 19th High Court verdict that okayed their release on bail. Dramatic events which, as it now appears, set momentum for similar developments to come. Next on the remand line, being millionaire owner of the ill-fated Nakuru Solai Dam that killed 47, who together with five others would spend three nights in remand before the court granted them bail. <laughs> and not long after, Busia Governor Sospita Ojamong, who spent three days in remand before his release on bail. And now, suspended Kenya power boss Ken Taruz, who together with 13 others now spend another night in remand as the court reconvenes on Tuesday for ongoing hearing into Director of Public Prosecution's objection to their release on bail. But why this latest trend of the DPP seeking denial of bail for key suspects, particularly those implicated in graft? The, the prosecution will come with this argument that we don't want you to interfere with the investigations of witnesses. Now, there are three tire processes in the criminal justice system. There's the investigative process, there is the prosecutorial process, then there is the adjudicative process. They're supposed to go separately. So that by the time you're arraigned in court, the investigative process ought to have concluded. <laughs> On the NYS cases, the DPP had opposed the release of the suspects on bond, citing likelihood that they could tamper with ongoing investigations, given their perceived seniority and connection to senior officials in the public service ministry. While on the Kenya Power Saga, the DPP cited a possibility that the suspects could intimidate potential prosecution witnesses, a majority of who were their subordinates at the power company an argument which ignited fierce objection from the suspect's lawyers. A court cannot act on apprehensions. If the court were to do so, <clears throat> several players brought by accused persons, including a player like this, would never be given because the sky would be the limit. But as the all-new renewed war on graft continues, debate, it appears, will no doubt intensify within legal circles on Director of Public Prosecution Nurdin Haji's new strategy on graft cases and its effectiveness as a deterrent to graft. Murumi Mwangikitia News, Nairobi. Great, so, so there's bail denial, there's bail delay. That story by Murimi Mwangi forms the basis of a big, of our big question tonight on KTN Prime. We're asking you, do you think the renewed tactics by the DPP and DCI against graft will yield results? Let us know what you think. We've seen several high-profile individuals being denied bail, bail or their bail requests being denied.